Hello and welcome here to Children's Mercy Park. I'm Sam McDowell, Sporting Kansas City beat writer for the Star. Here with Tate Steinloggy, our full 90 blogger, after a two to one Sporting Kansas City loss to Real Salt Lake. All right, Tate, not a lot to like from this match from Sporting Kansas City's perspective. What really stands out to you after this loss? I think the impressive thing is just how you know Real Salt Lake came out and played the game. You know, earlier in the week, several of the Real Salt Lake players, the coaches, they said, you know, they're not just going to come in here and sit back and then bunker down and not do anything in this game. And that's kind of reflects the way they played. You know, they were very smart in the way they attacked the game. Uh, they didn't push up too high. They didn't sit back way too much. They found a really nice comfort zone, and that kind of reflects the game. You know, they had they only had 34 percent of the possession. Um, they only had they had less than 300 passes, but at the same time, they had 15 shots. Several of them, you know, made Tim Melia work, and so I think that. Just reflects the type of team they were and kind of their determination to come get a result and not just sit back and do nothing the entire game. Yeah, I think that that's a good point. You know, we saw two teams tonight that were missing key guys. Sporting Kansas City is without its captain, Matt Beasler, without Roger Espinoza. You could argue two of their, their best players so far this season. Then you look at Real Salt Lake missing five starters. They still came in here to Children's Mercy Park and drove the game. And Sporting Kansas City, you know, after the match, talked a lot about how that first goal allowed Real Salt Lake to really slow down the, the tempo and play the style that they wanted to play. But we didn't see Sporting Kansas City do enough to counteract that. You know, they didn't have a lot of quality chances to, tonight to, to, you know, they, they scored a goal late on a PK. But other than that, we didn't even see very many near goals. I mean, what, what was your perspective on just – what can Sporting Kansas City, because we're going to see teams do this at Children's Mercy Park a lot this year. What do you think Sporting Kansas City can do to maybe counter that? You know, that's that's one thing. It's early, and there's so many guys. And what the one thing that I thought was interesting within that is that you know when you're missing Beasley, you're missing a guy who really manages a game. He manages it defensively, in fact, and you know setting up where guys are defensively. But he yeah. also, in that defense, allows the guys to push up a little higher and allows them to get on to attack a little bit better. And I think tonight, you know, Nuno Cueto, Kevin Ellis, neither of them are really managers. They are great complementary pieces to a guy like Beasley who manages the game. And those guys were just kind of wheeling, dealing, trying to find a nice little comfort zone for them to sit in. And it really just made Sporting KC kind of have to sit back a little more than they wanted to instead of actually being able to attack a team that is sitting back. So I think, you know, they'll learn, you know, when Beasler isn't and how to play a little bit better. But I think having Beasler back will obviously help that a lot. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. You know, when you're missing your captain, you're missing more than just, you know, his skill set on the field. You're missing his presence back there as well. And just the confidence you have that he's back there allows the other guys to maybe be a little bit more aggressive offensively. So uh, th that'll do it for, for us here tonight at Children's Mercy Park. Make sure you check out our coverage in, on KansasCity.com and inside the Kansas City Star. Thanks a lot.